Thank you very much, D-Man. Mm, guys, I gotta say, I am incredibly impressed with the Super Hot crew right now. Even though they got some targeted bans, the top lane bans coming in against them, Aurelia, a Jax, uh, I'm sorry, a Zinzawa, Yasuo, and a Lulu. That are not top lane bans. Zinzawa could play top. <laughs> you tried. Yeah, indeed. So the Lulu coming in for a selfie. The Zinzawa, of course, where Impaler played very well, and Yasuo selfie likes to play, but it didn't do all that much for C9. Once again, what did you think of their game plan coming up to the Nidalee over there? But they really couldn't get themselves going. I think Nidalee is a good pick, but you need to have the team comp needs to fit because you want to siege. And if you fall behind as a Nidalee, you have no wave clear. And if, especially if four people or something rotate into your lane and they take your tower, there's nothing you can do. But Fizz versus Nidalee is actually a really good matchup for him because he has free farm. Like one on one, Fizz wins the lane because he farms up and scales way harder than Nidalee into late game. 100% agree with Dexter. I mean, one of the reasons Fizz is popular now or being played is because of Nidalee. So you can take him against free farm the lane. You can even later on then just start split pushing around. Fizz is one of the strongest mages going into the late game. So that's a really good counter pick here from, uh, from Selfie. And of course, him getting the first blood helps. Yeah. And he just continued to go from there. And the whole comp from, uh, from Cloud9 was very good if you got into the late game. But then Subak could simply just shut them down early mid game. And when you lose all the lanes so hard, you lose the map control so hard, there's actually nothing you can do. There's actually some resemblances with yesterday when Millennium went down in the first game and then they totally changed their game plan around and barely made it in that game too, thanks to Nocturne and Rise. But you're still not a fan, Dexter. Yeah, it's too late game. Um, if you want to have a carry jungler, you need strong lanes. And if you want to have a farm Rise, you need a strong jungler. And if you have a Ryze playing one-on-one, -on -one, then he needs a lot of help because he will get camped for sure. And even a lane swap, it's good. And Ryze can freeze the lane for 20 minutes, but at the same time, you keep your jungle behind because he, he has to push a tower for like five minutes and doesn't stack his Feral Flare at all. And yeah, he won't really help Ryze at all. And I, I think it's too late game. You just need like a more mid-game oriented team comp. Well, I, still, I like the idea about going more late game for them because they showed in game one when they had their, their pick comp with LeBlanc, with Kha'Zix, they couldn't really play the map well enough. So I like the fact they went more for team fights and they went more for if we get ahead early game, we can start sieging down the tower with Nidalee, we can force them to fight us and then we have this very strong comp with Ryze as well who can go in there and obviously scales well into a late game. So I like the idea. But again, when you're actually getting outclassed against super hard crew in the lanes, there's just nothing you can do here. So they need to come in for the third game now and just either they need to go to, for comfort picks where they know they can perform or they just have to try and pick very strong laners and think, okay, we just need to win the, win, win the laning phase now and then see what happens. I mean, I'm not sure what they actually should do and that's why they're also behind. Well, that's fine because we have the Oracle here, Dexter, who yesterday predicted everything that Millennium should do. So Dexter, do you have any ideas? Because when you're falling behind in those lanes individually, there is not a lot you can do. Mm. The problem is preparation, coming into the games, and in the weeks of practice, you prioritize champions, and you can't change that in like two games, because world-class teams can do that. They can adapt to it, like a team like Fnatic could do it, or Gambit, but uh, it's really hard for someone or for a team that is an amateur scene to actually shift priorities between games. And yeah, I think they had a game plan already figured out and they need to execute it properly. Like the team comps are there, they have like solid uh, picks, but the execution is lacking, so. Yeah, and just to add to what Dexter is saying here, NIP yesterday, they never went for something like a Jax, never went for Ryze, never went for Nocturne, Kha'Zix. All the picks Millennium used to beat them, NIP couldn't adapt and pick them up themselves. They didn't actually play them, I believe. So it seems to be the thing here for the challenger teams, at least in Europe. The champion pools are not as, you know, as deep as the LCS teams and also the comps they can use doesn't seem to be there. So once they actually fall behind, once something doesn't work for them, they don't really know what to do to adapt. Yeah, strategy, of course, and preparation is one thing, and what's in your head is another thing. How can you adapt mentally? And that's also something we ask you guys at home at the top of today's show on Twitter. Which team has a psychological advantage in a promotion series and why? And here are some of the responses you sent in. The first one is from at, yep, it's just Jen. Super Hot Crew have the advantage. They have already handled great pressure from being in the LCS so far. And Mr. Raleigh is an insane AD carry. I love watching his Lucian, straight up. Well, I think they're showing here, I mean, why they have the advantage. They, 
again, they come in with a very good plan. They seem to have answers for whatever Denial did. Oh, Denial, not Cloud9, I mean. That's later. Yeah, that's later. <laughs> whatever Cloud9 is doing. I mean, Cloud9's first big need to lead here, and they just said, you know what, we, got, we can just play Fizz. We just save it for our last pick. So they got two very strong picks again, uh, Leona and Lucian. So for them, they seem to have answers to whatever Cloud9 is doing, and also they seem to play very confident. The second one is from at Justin Minglador, hashtag LCS, advantage to C9E and denial. Copenhagen Wolves and Super Hot Crew are essentially fighting for their lives. It's either perform or panic. Don't know if I 100% agree, because if you've lived the LCS life, you of course don't want to give it up, Sorry. right, Dexter? You don't want to give it up, yeah. no matter what happens. Um, I think it's way harder to get into LCS and to drop out. Like, I talked with a lot of players and everyone agrees it's like way harder to actually drop out than to get uh, to get into the LCS, it's very harder than to drop out because you get a lot of experience and it's basically a job. And you're not like an amateur who has like, you spend way more ga uh, game time, actual game time of playing as a LCS team and living together and you have more resources. So it's way easier to stay into LCS and we, sh we see that here. Yeah. And you get the absolute best practice. Every week you play the best teams yeah. in your region and it can get better. Absolutely. Well, maybe if you can't make it in here, you can try out for some North American team. Last one is from at HMX Constantine. The Wolves have the biggest advantage. Oldest franchise competing. Some of the most talented players in Europe will, of course, see the Copenhagen Wolves going up versus Denial later on. And we talked about it earlier, how yeah. Forgiven and Amazing are among the best in Europe at their position. Those two, so, such, I mean, so strong players, Unless Denial can actually shut them down early on in the games, they will be able to do a lot for Copenhagen Wolves. And I think it's what we're going to see later on yeah. as well. That's why we predict Copenhagen Wolves to win. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. And thank you to you guys at home and everyone who answers. Remember to follow us at LOL Esports and use that hashtag LCS to keep the conversation going. It's time for a short cast or cool down. And then it's on to game three between the Super Hot Crew and Cloud9. Will the Super